Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, and I'm joined with uh, Dan Garrett. Garrett and Representative John Graham. John from, Graham from yep. Bedford. From Bedford. And uh, today's topic, uh, and both, both of you are also from the American Legion. Yes. Representing, uh, and the, today's topic is going to be about this, this wonderful program that I, I just learned about called Boy State. That's it. Boy State. And uh, it's been around for about 66 years. In New Hampshire, 66 years. 66 and, years. Yeah, and probably uh, 88 years nationally. And it, it's part of, affiliated with, of course, the American Legion. Yes. It and is. It, we, we are the sponsors, and we pick up the, it, the cost of it for the students who go. So, right. Um, and what is the whole purpose of this boy state? What, what, is it, what is it all about? The purpose is to try to work <laughs> with our young folks in the high school uh, mm -hmm. People have completed their junior year of high school. And basically what we're trying to do is uh, get them interested in the American way of government so that they can understand how it works and that they can uh, hopefully become involved. And um, we do that through um, having them get together and establishing their mythical 51st state called Boy State. Okay. And um, it also uh, helps them. To, another purpose is developing their leadership skills. Uh, once the, uh, we'll talk a little more later about when students get elected to offices, they actually run the uh, office that they've been elected to. Right. So um, it's, uh, it's uh, been around, like I said, 66 years, and uh, we've put a lot of students through the program. And it, it's interesting. I just heard about it, and, uh, you know, we had a coffee at the there's a River Walk Cafe yeah. here in Nashua, and just sitting there talking about it, and I, I, I just, the more I hear about this, the more impressed I am. Mm -hmm. And you made a comment that kind of stuck in my mind that, you know, when, when the, the boys come in, the week after they're, they're done this program, they, they leave men. And, and it, because something happens, something changes, and, and because they, they learn, what do they learn? What is, what is okay. it? Basically, when they, uh, when they arrive at the program, they've already been assigned to a uh, city or town, uh, political party, which is a mythical political party. Um, <clears throat> also, whether they're in the House or the Senate. And we, what we do is we take uh, two-thirds of the students and put them in the House and one-third in the Senate to simulate what happens in reality. And essentially the same thing with the cities and towns. The, town, the city is a little bit larger than generally the two towns that we have. And basically through the use of uh, guest speakers as well as a uh, very competent staff who have all been through the program, uh, they guide the students uh, on establishing their governments, initially a city and town, and then ultimately... Uh, establishing the uh, party platforms and um, having their elections with the uh, pr primary elections and then final elections of the governor's office. And what happens during their uh, individual section is, like I said, when uh, somebody gets elected the mayor, um, he then becomes in charge of the city. Uh, the staff is there to guide them, uh, but the student exhibits his leadership skills with the uh, support of the staff. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you listen to the dialogue that's going on during this whole process? And what do you what do you discover in this whole process? You... I, I discover that we have a lot of great young men in in the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. They come from all walks of life, all parts of the state, from Berlin to <laughs> Hinsdale to Nashua, and a lot of points in between. And they're all there to learn. And I, and I think that that's the big thing. And what Dan was saying is. They do it. They, they do their platform. They do the elections. They run for elections or become a campaign manager for somebody. So that's the learning process. You know, it's not, you know, for example, I teach a class on what we do up at the State House, you know, right. how the House works and how the Senate works. But we don't, I don't come in and then watch and say, this is how you have to run your House meetings. Um, sometimes it gets a little rambunctious. <laughs> But um, they, they work it out, and I think that that's the big thing. Right. Yeah, and one of the beauties of it is, as John mentioned, somebody coming down from Coas County finds out that uh, people on the seacoast have different interests, right. different needs. Somebody right. from Nashua right. Right. or somebody from the uh, Walpole, New Hampshire, they get to learn that, wow, there really is a difference here. You know, it's sort of like when you go to kindergarten, all you know are your family's values, and you get into school and you hear different things. And yet it's the same thing at Boy State, and they, they create friendships that we hope will last forever. The program, uh, one of the models of the program is a week that shapes a lifetime. So you, you're, you're basically offering this to juniors in high school. That's or right. in middle yeah. school or yeah. whatever. Junior, it's, high it's school. junior high school. school. Yeah. How, how do, how do the, the schools respond to this, and how do the kids get involved? How do they get selected for this program? Do you have to be an honor student? or? 
Well, basically, um, we send out the applications around the end of February, early mm -hmm. March, and um, we also send the we send them to all of the high schools in the state. All of them are 120 something invited to participate, and we also involve the homeschool associations. Oh. And um, the guy, we hope that there's a guidance counselor or a social studies teacher, somebody who we uh, we'd like to have as a champion within the school that promotes the program. Now we understand that guidance counselors, uh, everybody, they're all overworked. They have other right. things to worry about. Uh, but the ones that are familiar with the program um, really do a pretty good job. Um, we would like to have more students. We've had more students in the past, and uh, we we are. S Settled around between 55 and 65 now for uh, the last handful of years. We'd love to get it back to 100, and we're hoping that this program generates some interest right. and, in, uh, and gets them uh, up there. So they, you know, they, they, they're expected to have at least an 80 degree, 80, uh, an 80 average, or and we rely Seen about the, yeah, and we rely on the school to, to give us students who can take the pace mm -hmm. because, uh, as we discussed at coffee. There's no lax, no real lax time here. They're up at 6:45 in the morning till late into the evening. Although they're given activity periods and some kind of rest periods in the course of the day. I was going to ask what, what, the, the students that have come in the past. What are their general interests when they get there? What are their expectations? Are, are they fully aware of what what they're looking? Most at? of them are because they've been talked to either by the the individual in the school or hopefully, if not with them to, to do it, um, one of the Legion posts, there's 100 American Legion posts throughout the state who actually do the sponsoring of, of the students and help pick up the, the tab uh, for, for, for this uh, uh, week at uh, Riviera College. Right. So they've all talked to them. I know that I talked to the ones that, for example, come from Bedford and, and others that, that anybody wants me to talk to, but um, you know, this is what it is. And they also get a packet. Dan's not real thick, but a thick packet of you know what to expect, what to bring, and they all have to have written a bill that they want to submit to the legislature before they get there. That's part of their application process. Oh, interesting. Yeah, right. so um, they've had to have given a little bit of thought about what they want to do, and then they have to follow that bill through when they get there. Oh, and, then and they, they do it? have the, the uh, on the first day we do have a session on writing bills. And the student can revise the bill. Yeah, I mean it's not right. it's amended just, or right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's well, just, it's, it's like going to legislative services. Right. And, right. It's just making a little commitment when they get there to have some kind of a bill that yeah. they're thinking about. Now, do they have to it. take a civics course or anything like this at the school? Or no, it's it's open to any junior, as Dan was saying. You know, public, private, or homeschooled who is finishing their junior year and going into their senior year in school. Why and now I think that most of them have had some exposure to either through the, the social studies curriculum or whatever, you know, what American civics are. Right. But our emphasis is on state government, town, city, a little bit on county, and state government. And then, you know, how do things work here in New Hampshire? And we get a lot of great speakers who come in um, and just talk about, you know, what does a town manager do? What does a selectman do? Right, uh, right. Well, city know, councilor or, 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 or executive councilor. We've had um, uh, Councilor Pignatelli has come in and talked with the students before about what the executive council does here in Do in you get into school boards or, or, or zoning or, or planning? Well, you know, last year the uh, town government speaker we had did a lot of zoning. <laughs> And that was Dean Shankel from Hookset. Yeah. And he did a really nice job. The kids, I think, were almost expert in zoning by the end of his session. But uh, we also do, we do the uh, legislative branch and the executive branch. We also do the judicial. We do something at the ju judicial branch also. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, usually a representative from the Attorney General's office comes in and talks about criminal process. And we have a um, <clears throat> um, local police department, usually Nashua, the program's in Nashua. They come in and talk about juvenile offenses, uh, juvenile offenders, community policing, things that the kids would be interested in. And those questions are always great because the kids will put their hand up and say, well, I know somebody who, <laughs> this is me. But. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we also have somebody, uh, sometimes, uh, most of the time it's been a judge who come in and talk about the um, court system right. in the state of New Hampshire. And then we also have a mock trial, which the students participate in. A lot of... Uh, I know that a lot of people are very ignorant about what the sheriff's department does. Is that part of the program too? Or? Uh, and I say ignorant, not just, yeah. they just don't know. No. Well, we spend very little time on county government. Um, 
you know, just that it's part of your tax pro and it's, it's, you know, the police, uh, I'm sorry, the prisons, the county jails, and the sheriffs uh, who, who serve writs. Yeah. And things. So it's not, there's not a big section. Right. right. Well, but, you know, we, but we only have the, the, the five and a half days or so there. And if you start out with saying, well, you know, here's your town, here's your county, you got to develop that. You have to do your, county, your party platform. Mm -hmm. And write that, and we they do write their own party platform, as, as Dan said, and then go into what the legislature does, what the judicial, you know. So we have them working, and not to slight county, but most of what we teach about New Hampshire is then transferable if they ever want to leave the state. Hopefully not, but they may. Right. You know, now so. you're, you're investing in, in, into the kids so that they yeah, they can sure. have they can walk in. You know, usually. Actually, when I became a state rep, uh, it was like drinking out of a fire hose. <laughs> it really was. There was, uh, you know, yeah. we had to go through the rules committee and, and I, you know, who's who, and I, did, I only yeah. knew a few people there and uh, what the whole process was. And it almost took me six months to, to, the, to the year to get my feet uh, right. to understand. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and then yeah. the so, fire in the belly. Yeah. So. We have all those speakers, and then uh, toward the end of the week on Thursday, we generally we take a trip up to Concord. And we have these students fed at a local legion post to make a change. Mm -hmm. And then we meet with the governor. And uh, generally what happens, John coordinates that. And the Speaker of the House invites the governor to come into the speak House chamber, addresses the students. And then when the governor's done, the students get to debate one or two bills in the actual House of Representatives. Oh, wow. yeah, and then you get the kids that will be elected. Speaker of the House, just marveling at, wow, the real speaker sits in this chair <laughs> right. and begs the gavel. Oh, that's that's yeah. memorable. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is memorable. Oh. You know, and, yeah. and and so that those it's the memories too are, are important to the students. You know, as well as what they learn. But if you can have them do it themselves and make it memorable, maybe it will stick. Uh, you know, it's it's sort of like going to college classes where it's just a lecture class versus one where there's only 15 or 20 of you, and you have to participate. Right, right. You know, there's a big difference. Yeah. And our staff is a real combination of, uh, we have an attorney, we have a couple people working on doctorates, we've got an MIT student. So we've got quite a uh, capable and qualified staff, and they're all the youngish, so that the kids can relate to right. them. And uh, one is an Annapolis grad, so if they're interested in the academies, uh, they can have conversation with that person during the week. So they get pretty comprehensive uh, experience coming to the program. Tell us about some of the success stories, or success stories, well, drink some water, uh, that people have graduated and gone on to further get a life in politics, or uh, you, you mentioned a few. Well, uh, you know Kevin Landrigan? Yes. He's a graduate yeah. of Boy State. Oh, yeah. so, interesting. You know, so it's, it could be almost any, any field, not just politics yeah. or it's uh, Jeff, Rose, uh, Jeff Rose is the Director of Public Affairs, I believe, at BAE. Right. And he was a 19, uh, well, I won't say, I won't get the full age. Not, he was way back. 19 and, uh, still dates you. And Chris Hodgson, who's the Director of Public Relations for Comcast, hmm. also was a graduate. So those are kind of a couple that kind of stand out. But, but as Dan was saying, we currently have students who are at MIT, UNH, um, other, a cat, uh, couple of the students who went last year, or have just been nominated to go to the service academies. <coughs> now, Excuse me. Now, Revere University, right? It's now a yeah, university here in Nashville. July, yes. uh, they offer credits if, if you've, grad, <coughs> you've gone through the course? Yep, this is an agreement uh, we made with them in 2006. We presented the uh, purposes of the program, what our curriculum was, and uh, they did approve it uh, for three college credits. Which is, it's, uh, it's optional to the students. There's no requirement. They have to pay $100 a credit, which is a great deal today. But they uh, can get three college credits. They successfully complete the program. Uh, there is some testing at the end of the week, primarily to make sure we're conveying what we're trying to convey to the students. Right. Uh, so then they get their grades, and then uh, if they choose to, they apply and get uh, the three credits awarded. And the credits are transferable to any accredited college. And there's a ceremony at the end of the week that... The yeah. graduation yes, ceremony. Yes, graduation ceremony, and um, at that uh, ceremony, you want to say something about that? You want me to? Yeah. Uh, well, the the ceremony, we uh, you know obviously give out their their diplomas, and then they do. I'll do get a diploma, and we award scholarships. Um, that well, educational grants. You know, <laughs> yeah. However you want to phrase it, 
of, what did we give out last 7, year? 7,000. 7,000. Wow. And um, you know, when you get about 60 kids, those are pretty good odds because nobody can win yeah. two. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, so. Is 60 the, the, the magic number? No, we'd, we'd like no. to be up over 100. Yeah, we've got to accommodate about 110 in the dorm that we have. Yeah. Now we have a 400. Uh, Piece legislation uh, legislator, yeah. can, can you do up to 400 or is it is no, 100? We're, no, we're probably restricted to about 100, maybe 110, right? Because of the facilities. Yeah. Right. But, but, the, uh, but, but also, uh, the um, uh, at the graduation, we also <clears throat> during the week we've we have successfully or succeeded in selecting a candidate for what we call a Samsung scholarship, and that's a thousand dollar scholarship. But that person then becomes eligible for one of 12. $20,000 scholarships at the national level in September. And as the name implies, uh, Samsung donated about $5 million to the American Legion some years ago uh, in gratitude for the, our efforts in the Korean War. And um, we live off the interest. And uh, so we still have that $5 million and uh, students who get, them, uh, get their scholarship. And then uh, 2008? Yeah, it was had, eight, yeah. In Berlin, Hampshire, we had our one winner of $20,000, which is great. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And then also, uh, we at the graduation, we select students to go to the national program called Boys Nation. And there's two that they get two that. Yeah, two get two. selected and two alternates. And um, they get uh, expenses, uh, all expenses paid trip to Marymount University for 10 days. Uh, they get to meet the President of the United States. They meet all yeah. any other cabinet member who's in town. They have uh, special tours of the FBI buildings and the uh, Bureau of Printing and Engraving. An inside et cetera, et cetera. Right? Nice. Yeah, so it, um, wow. again, and, it, and it's a nice package. You, 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 many people remember the picture of, of Bill Clinton with uh, John F. Kennedy. He was the, the Arkansas representative from Boy State that year. That's how come he was there to be. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so there are, there are a lot of people that. Uh, have gone through the program in other states that, that are also successful, but you know, it creates quite an awareness yeah. and, and a, a yeah. better understanding yeah. of how your government and how you can be effective That's, in your government. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and actually, on our on our uh, website currently, um, the um, there's a um, video of what's his name. <laughs> Which, what is the name uh, of the website, by the way? It's uh, New Hampshire. It's www.newhampshireboysstate.com. Dot org. Dot org. Okay. Is, is there a fee to, to, to be part of this, or is it 100% taken by the... Uh, well, the, we have been, late, the last couple of years, we've charged the students a $25 application fee, mm -hmm. and then the American Legion pays $300. They raise the money. Some of the legions will pay that thirty that $25, and, um, and that, so it's all covered. So there's really almost no cost to them, and, and we actually provide them with snacks and sodas all week. Which is quite a quite a thing. But, but I just remembered now, <laughs> Tom Brokaw oh, is on yeah. the video because he was yeah, governor of Boy State in North or South Dakota. That's right. You yeah. brought that up in our conversation. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's kind of but a nice little piece that we have on there. It now. is. But you know, the, it, and when you think about it, we we are getting a decent deal, not just decent, a very good deal from every year university with what they charge us to putting them up, feeding them, using the classrooms, you know, <laughs> and the rest. But for the student. It's, it's we pay, and uh, it's a great opportunity for them. Um, now, there, there's, a, there's a girls state, too. So that's the, yep. there's one specifically for girls. There's one specifically for right. maybe a different uh, philosophy? or how? Well, the girls state is run by the American Legion Auxiliary. We essentially have the same purposes and objectives, but the uh, methodology is a bit different. OK. Yeah. Do they also utilize Revere? No, they do not. They have uh, on occasion. Uh, I'm not sure where they are this year. I th um, last year, I know that no, they went to Franklin Pierce, Franklin over, Pierce. over in Range. Yeah. And, and they get people, um, some of the female uh, members will, will go. The Speaker of the House, uh, Terry Norelli, has, has been over there, and, and various chairmen and others, so that they have a female role model to right. come in and, and talk to them, which makes a there lot, are a lot of, of sense. There are a lot of them available this year. There are, there are a lot of them. They, they have been in the past. Yeah. Even, yeah. <laughs> but even, uh, yes. um, you know, executive counselors and, you know, yeah, the, like uh, executive counselor. Executive counselor Pinkinatelli does a great job for us yeah. when she's available. You know, so, you know, it, it, it does matter to, to bring in, for, on the girls' side, to right. bring in, you know, strong female role models when, when they're doing it. And they, they do a good job of, of trying to do that. Now, have you, have you been invited to the schools to talk about this at all? Or? 
Uh, are you waiting for the invitation? Well, essentially what happens is the, uh, when the applications go out, the local Legion posts are, requ are requested to make an approach to the school. Okay. So some do, yeah. some don't. And, uh, and, and sometimes it's hard to get in. Yeah. Um, as Dan said earlier, you know, a lot of guidance counselors, principals, um, history teachers, you know, whatever, whomever, it's one of those, oh, something else. Right. Another program, you know, I, I, but if you can find one person in the school who either understands the program or who's been through it, you, you have an in. Um, so you just we, have to be persistent. Yeah, and we, and we do send the materials to all three of those, principal, right. guidance counselor, social studies department. Yeah. And if it's during the time of testing, oh, hello, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was talking to one teacher just recently, and uh, she's uh, their, their school happened, and this is in the elementary, yeah. but they, they were... Uh, Going through specific testing and, and they were they're, they're selected, and she said, I, "I think I'm going to be considered a bad teacher this year because I got to do all this testing on top of that, and no. totally no. distracted from what they have to do." So well, and, and it is, and and we also um, obviously we do shows like this in various places, um, ads, um, you know, letters to the editor in local papers because you really do have to gear it at the local level, you know, right. for. For people in Nashua to say, you know, who to, who to call here in Nashua or in Bedford, New Hampshire, call myself or or somebody like that, because they're probably not going to call uh, um, somebody <laughs> far away. You know, you would think Nashua would take, a, 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 you know, a great interest in this because mm -hmm. Revere is obviously here. So yeah, well, we we have fair representation from Nashua. Right. So, uh, all, but across the state, Berlin, Fairmont, uh, you know, Keene. Where we've really has stood out in the last four or five years have been the smaller towns up north. Right. Have, uh, Colebrook. <laughs> yeah. Walpole, yeah. New Hampshire has gotten very involved. People live up Sugar there? Sugar Hill. <laughs> yeah, we had a student from Sugar Hill last year, and, which is and, up way up there. Just mm -hmm. And Littleton. the other one, surprisingly, that is starting to, we've seen an uptick in is, is homeschool yeah. uh, students. Um, and hopefully we can continue to expand on that because that's a, you know, they, they are students within the state and we should be reaching out to them as well. So it's hard to, to, to corral them and right. get the word out to them. Which How is about what, our private schools? Uh, Christian they they schools, get the same California. information. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're all, we oh, take as long we, as they're, they're listed in the, in, on the, the websites, website. oh, great. Yeah. they get the, the information. And so, so the, we don't uh, care. One, the only thing we didn't talk about yet that we talked about over coffee was the, um, we do have the students participate in an exercise by the Con uh, Concord Coalition, which is a reduce the deficit budget. And uh, as I mentioned to you, we give the kids game boards, and they're given a set of coins for the income to the, uh, the country. It's the right. only national exercise we do, because it's great. And they get so many coins for that. Then when they see the expenditures, they realize, boy, they're really short of coins. <laughs> they can't match, they can't match it. So they're given a different color coin to exemplify what the deficit is. And then we use an actual federal budget, I guess the last one that was the last budget they had. And um, the kids go through all the different departments and, uh, and organizations. If they want to raise defense money, they got to take it from somewhere else. But, but they, then it becomes fun for, for the members of the staff, you know, myself and others, we'll stand behind them and go, well, wait a minute, I'm a veteran, and you're going to take the money away yeah, from, yeah. from Veterans <laughs> exactly, Affairs, yeah. or you're not going to fund the DOD? You know, and so they have to understand that there's also this, these big constituencies behind them, whether it's represented by lobbyists or just they're the people who have elected them, supposedly, saying, you know, don't cut my, my so, bread basket. So, they, so they, oh, set, yeah. they set a goal of cutting $10 trillion over the next 10 years, and then they see yeah. how close they can get to it. So it's kind of a fun exercise, but it really makes it, them aware of what's going yeah. on. Tough decisions. It's not just, you can't just keep criticizing the politicians until you see what they're doing. Exactly. But, yeah. but then after you know what they're doing, you can still criticize them a little well, bit. Of right? course, <laughs> it's always, yeah. that's part of the fun. Right. Yeah. So is yeah. there anything else that you'd want our, our viewers to know about? Uh, uh, well, it, it is run the last week in June, first, or first week in July. We're still negotiating, I believe, yes, yeah. with Riviera on exactly when it is. Mm -hmm. um, we should have all the packets out in March, to the, March. Yeah. to the schools. And um, anybody who wants to know more, um, go to the website. And, and the website is, again, one more time? Yeah. 
uh, www.NewHampshireBoysState.org, and that information will be updated also March 1st. Yeah. Fantastic. Gentlemen, yeah. thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, if you want to get your student involved with this, please contact them. This is a great opportunity to get your students involved or have a good understanding on how your, your state and local government works. It's, it's amazing, and I, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing this. Thank you. All right. So until next week, thank you very much for watching uh, Gate City Chronicles.